Pox Lays an Egg by Butterfly Apocalypse on AO3. Episode 2, Chapter 2. Rummy banged her fist against Hawk's door. Hawks, I know you're in there. Your location is on. Honestly, usually this kid was more responsible than that. Nobody had seen him for a few days, and rumors were beginning to fly. It wasn't entirely unusual for him to go AWOL, but holding up in his apartment without a word to anyone else for days on end? That was suspicious. Hawks didn't have a lot of friends in the hero industry, because he was irritating. And though Rumi wasn't entirely sure about Hawks' personal life, he never mentioned other friends to her. That meant, if something had happened to him, she was likely the only person who was going to check on him. She knocked again. Hawks! Her ear shriveled, trying to pick up any sounds of life. She could hear shuffling and growling? Then footsteps. Finally, the door cracked open, just wide enough to reveal a hard-looking Hawks. A pang of concern shot through Rumi. Whoa, you okay, bud? Peachy! Hawks gave her a thumbs up. Never been better. You look like ass, Rumi said bluntly. You sick or something? Always happy to see you too, Rumi, said Hawks. Rumi raised an eyebrow. Hmm, yeah, your eyeliner is smudged. You're not fooling me. What's wrong? Hawks reached up to his face. My eyeliner is not... His fingertips came away dirty. He gasped. My eyeliner! Don't look at me! He threw his arms in front of his face. Look, bud, I don't know if you think I'm stupid or what, but something is obviously wrong, so we could do this the easy way or the hard way. Remy took a step forward, trying to push past Hawks. The reaction was immediate. All of Hawks' feathers stood up, and he redoubled his efforts to keep the door mostly closed, and he let out what could only be described as a meddling coup. Whoa, easy, easy. Rumi stepped back, placatingly. We can talk out here, that's fine. Hawks did not look comforted. In fact, he kept shooting little glances over his shoulder, shifting anxiously from foot to foot. Yeah, look, I'd love to talk. Really, I would. You're like my favorite person, but I'm a bit, uh, preoccupied, so I really should get back to- Hey, are you hiding something? Rumi narrowed her eyes. This was quickly going from concerning and amusing to suspicion. You got a villain in there? Hawks laughed nervously. A villain? What? <laughs> why why, why there, would there be a villain in my apartment? That's, that's wild. He turned his head over his shoulder in a distinctly bird-like maneuver. Yep, no villains here. This is a 100% villain-free zone. Don't do drugs, stay in school, eat your vegetables. Bye. Before he could fully close the door, Runmi lunged forward, shoving Hawks out of the way. Hawks' wings beat frantically, sending up a storm of red feathers. No! He shrieked. No, stop, you don't understand. He tried in vain to slow Rummy's march into his apartment. If she was a nicer person, Rummy might have felt a little bad about this, but Hawks was acting shady. Intrusively, Rummy knew Hawks was a powerful and skilled hero, but he was kind of twinkish, especially in comparison to her. If it came down to it, she was pretty sure she could beat him in a fight or at the very least, an arm-rustling contest. Apparently, Hawks realized this too, because he switched methods. He flustered forward and planted himself in front of his bedroom door. He spread his wings, ridiculously wide. Don't come in here. Rumi rolled her eyes. Wasn't this guy supposed to be smart? Now she knew exactly where to look. Stop, please! Hawks cried. Red feathers began tugging intensively at the back of her shirt. She swatted them away impatiently. Hawks began making noises like a de-stressed chicken. Rumi almost snorted, but gave her pause. Finally, when she noticed, tears welding up in Hawks' eyes. Okay, that was not normal. Hey, hey, why are you crying? I'll stop. Look, see? She held up her hands. Stop crying, you'll ruin your eyeliner more. Hawks blinked several times, and the rapid rise and fall of his chest began to slow, 
his wings didn't return to normal size, but he did look significantly less deranged. Hawks, Romy put on her best stern, older sister voice she could muster. Tell me what's going on. Hawks sighed. He rubbed his hands over his face, carefully avoiding his eyes. I... Can I trust you? He sounded so vulnerable. Romy's heart squeezed in her chest. She really did care about Hawks. He irritated her and made her laugh and quickly became like the brother she'd never had. Of course, bud, you can trust me. She consciously made her tone reassuring. Hawks looked her into the eyes, searchingly. For a few tense moments, they were both silence. Then Hawk nodded. Okay, he sighed. Okay, I'll show you. Just move slowly and don't get too close. Sure thing, Romy agreed. A shoe of theories of what Hawks was about to show her flew through her mind. But nothing could have prepared her for the sight that met her when Hawks stepped aside. On his bed, a mass of blankets, pillows, feathers, stuffing, and who knows what else was arranged in a pile. Nestled in the middle was an egg. A pearly, white egg about the size of an American football. Hawks hurried over to the nest and began adjusting pillows and blankets around the egg. That is an egg, Romy said intelligently. Sure is, Hawks agreed. You laid an egg? said Romy. Sure did, Hawks confirmed. Romy looked at the egg. Then she looked at Hawks. Then she looked at the egg. Then back to Hawks. That came out of you? Yep, Hawks said without elaboration. Romy blinked. She opened and closed her mouth several times. Ow. Nope. Hawks cut her bitterly. Romy nodded. Right. Right. At some level, she had known Hawks could lay eggs. It was one of the first stories he told her when they had gone in drinking together. He told her about how before he really started getting around, he felt pent up and frustrated. And next thing you know, he was laying an egg. Literally. The part of the story that had made her choke on the drink had been Hawks dealing with how he'd become so broody. He chased off the mailman, pizza man, and a stray dog. How he'd become single-handedly obsessed with caring for this unfertilized egg. Eventually, he came to the senses, went to a doctor, and managed to shake it out of him. Romy shook her head. Oh, Hawks, should I take you to the doctor? Oh, no, that's not necessary. Hawks shook his head, remondedly. You know, the sooner you get away from it, the sooner it could snap you out of your broodiness. Hawks' feathers flared at the suggestion to be removed from his egg. No, that's not... No. If it's not fertilized, it's not gonna hatch, bud. Remy reminded him. Hawks pursed his lips and did not meet her eyes. Wait. Hawks? Is it fertilized? He didn't respond. Hawks? Yeah? Hawks tug on his shirt collar. It's, uh, it's pretty fertilized. Oh. My. God. Hawks. Romy clapped a hand over her mouth. So, yeah, that's what I've been up to, Hawks said nonchalantly. Who's the baby daddy? Romy demanded. Hawks grinned and made a show of sipping his lips. An idea popped into her mind. An unfortunate, plausible theory. No, no way, Hawks. Don't tell me. Is it? Ugh, she can't even say it. Hawks blinked in surprise, as if he hadn't expected her to have a guess. Oh, no, don't think I'm blind, she scoffed. If Hawks thought he was subtle about what he wanted, he'd be dead wrong. It's Endeavor, isn't it? Endeavor? Hawks said incredulously. Then he threw his head back and laughed. Oh my god, that would be fantastic. I wish it was Endeavor's. Hey, do you think the media would believe the egg is Endeavor's? Would you help me start that rumor? Hawks, Romy deadplanned. Hawks looked far too excited. I'm serious. Do you think with enough pressure from the public, he would start paying child support? Can you imagine the headlines? 
Number one hero has affair with number two hero. Love child on the way. No, Romy groaned. Stop, I don't want to imagine that. She thought for a moment. I also don't want, under any circumstances, any knowledge about whether or not Endeavor could conceivably believe that the egg is his. I just, I do not want to know that. Hawks cheerfully zipped his lips again and gave her a cryptid thumbs up. Rumi rolled her eyes. Weirdo. So, if it's not Endeavor's, whose is it? Do I know him? Uh, no, you don't know him, said Hawks. So what's the problem with you telling me? Have you been sleeping around and just have no idea who it actually is? Are we going to have a Mamma Mia situation? Hawks groaned. I don't sleep around. Why does everyone think that? I'm loyal like 90... Wait. No. Hawks contemplated for a moment. At least 80% of the time. Romy couldn't tell if he was joking. So, you know who the baby daddy is? She pressed. Yeah, I know who the baby daddy is, said Hawks. And you're not going to tell me who it is because... Is he famous or something? Rumi asked. Hawks screwed his face, looking conflicted. Yeah, I guess you could say he's famous. He murmured something under his breath that Rumi didn't catch. Infamous, perhaps? You must really care about him if you're so concerned about his reputation. You wouldn't even hesitate to throw Endeavor's reputation under the bus. Is baby daddy paying you to keep quiet? Then something occurred to her. Unless it's not his reputation you're worried about. Hawked looked like a deer in headlights. Under different circumstances, Romy might have laughed at him for being so readable. But right now, it just made her angry. It was a good thing. Hawks would never be considered a spy work. Any villain worth their salt would see through him in an instant. Hawks? She said in a low voice. It's not a villain, is it? Hawks gulped. He nodded, minutely. Anger flared through Romy. Hawks, what the hell? You... You're the number two hero. You should know better. What were you thinking? Hawk stuck his head. Honestly, thinking had very little to do with it. Uh, obviously. How did this even happen? Romy robed her temples. If this were anyone but Hawks, she would have kicked him through the window by now. Hawks thought for a moment. Tander? Romy was unamused. Nice try, bud. Hawks shrugged. Okay, fine. It was Grinder. Strike two. I know you only use Grinder to get sugar daddies. You want to get a third strike? How do you know he wasn't a sugar daddy? Hawks whipped. Romy considerously filled up her bicep. Hawks deflated. All right, the truth. I was on a mission, recon stuff, and I met him. And we talked and sparks flew, I guess. Huh, <laughs> spark flew, literally. Realizing what he just said, Hawk slapped a hand over his mouth. Rumi's eyes widened. Sparks flew. Infamous slash famous. You hooked up with Dobby. It wasn't a question. And the prize for Super Sloth goes to Rumi. Yay! Hawks gave some half-hearted jazz hands. This is hilarious. I love this. By the way, those who, not, who do not know, Rumi is, what was their hero name? It's the bunny girl. Uh, what hero name? Hero name. I forget the hero name. What's the hero name? Uh, Miracle? There you go. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Miracle. Let me just double check that it is Miracle. Uh, Miracle, yes. Rabbit hero, Miracle. Uh, currently number five. All right, yeah. It's Miracle. Rumi is Miracle. I'm not even gonna pronounce her, her last name. Rumi, su uh, no. Uh, but yeah. That is... I'm sorry. <laughs> the idea that Hawks is a horrible liar is the most hilarious thing in my mind. Right? It's, it's so funny. It's so funny. It's so hilarious. I love it so fucking much. But, um... Hawks literally being like, oh, wait, hold up. Can we say it's Endeavors? Do you think after, you know, so much bullying from the public, you'll start paying child support? All Hawks is thinking about is, hmm, that money, that bank. That bank for my 
Well, there's there's no name for the baby, but I'll call it Omelette. Oh my god, I'm turning into uh, into Dobby. Omelette. I I love how... I, I also like to just think that maybe Rumi can just read him like an open book because, you know, sometimes... Sometimes it's easy to lie to other people and it's easy to just, you know, pretend with other people. But the second it's someone that, like, you know and someone that you trust and stuff like that, it kind of gets harder. Like, for example, I can't lie to my best friend. I'm sorry. I can't do that. She reads me like an open book. Then again, we've also been friends for, like, 14 years. So, 15. No, 14. 14. It was 14 years. It's about to be 15, if we're being honest. In, um, in... Yeah, it's about to be 15 in a couple months. It's gonna be 15. Well, more than a couple months. In a year, it's gonna be 15. <laughs> Not in a year, but it's gonna be 15 soon. So, actually, in a couple months, because we met... Oh! No, yeah. 15 years in a couple months. And by a couple months, I mean, like, five? Five months? Yeah. So, it's, um, it's sometimes it's interesting to see, like, best friends being able to read, uh, each other more easily than others and thinking, like, oh, this person's never gonna be able to do recon and stuff like that or be a spy. When in reality, this is a cunning person who could do it, except they cannot do it to their best friend. Like, there's, there's a line, and that line, uh, is right there. There's, there's a line to their skill. There's a limit to their skill. Lying to their best friend and fooling them surpasses that limit. But, no, yeah. I'm loving this so far. It's funny, it's goofy. Is it necessarily serious? No. But the writing is really good. I've always noticed that uh, with Crack Fix, you either get a really good, well-written in the sense of the actual writing style being super good to the point where you're like, oh my fucking god, this is good. And then sometimes the plot can be a bit silly, but then it becomes serious and there's serious moments and really good character developments and character lines and character plots. And then sometimes the pacing is really good. I mean, with writing, I feel like there's three main points of writing. And then um, we could sum it down to like even more, uh, what's it called? Sim not similar, um, small points, right? Like writing style, we could talk about whether it's a more, you know, Lord of the Flies type of style or more of a modernized type of style, right? Um, and then from there, we could even break it down more. Is it Lord of the Flies in the sense of like, it's just pure action? Or is it also description? And then we could go in the route of pacing. Is it fast paced? Is it slow paced? Is it fast paced in the sense that it's slow paced? And, and in that sense, I mean like everything's happening fast, but it's not to the point where you feel like everything's going by quickly. It feels like everything is slow, but then you realize, oh shit, this is fast paced. It's been a year for these characters, but it feels like it's only been two months. And sometimes that could be bad, but sometimes it could be intentional. Like sometimes it's it's a traumatic story and it needs to feel like no time has passed because sometimes with trauma, sometimes it just be like that, you know? Or like they're having a fun time and sometimes that, it just be like that, right? And then there's obviously the, what's it called? The the actual, um, wait, hold on, I'm missing one. The plot, the plot. And that could go into little sub uh, sublimit. I think the plot is the one that could be broken down in so many. Like, the plot can be broken down into the actual storyline, the setting. I think writing could also go into tone. And tone could be affected by all of these three, but for the most part, it, it goes under tone. And then we could then split it up into um, uh, characters and character development. Character development can also go under uh, pacing. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm nerding out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is supposed to be a crack fic, and here I am nerding out in the outros. And as always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.